Making a good, satisfying platformer is a lot harder and more involved than throwing a physics body on top of a tile map and calling it a day. So here's a few tips for how you can make your platformer feel better to play, from the basics to some more advanced tricks. Also, to provide a reference on how to implement the techniques mentioned today, I'll be using my advanced state machine template as the backbone of my player controller and showing the code I add to it along the way. So let's get started. Tip number one, don't use rigid bodies. So let's go ahead and get this one out of the way. Rigid bodies exist to simulate actual physics objects. You apply forces to move them, define their center of mass, add materials, defining their coefficients for friction and collisions and so on, so that you can have something that behaves according to the laws of physics. But good platforming isn't realistic, so why would you use a physics body designed for that purpose? You're better off using a simplified physics solution, which also comes with a nice performance boost, and adding in the complexity you need so that it behaves exactly how you want it to, rather than constantly fighting the physics simulation because for example, the friction that makes horizontal movement feel good means you get stuck on walls when you jump. Been there, don't recommend it. Tip number two, buffer jump inputs. A common issue with platforming occurs when the player is in the air, about to land on the ground, and immediately wants to jump again. So they go ahead and press jump, but they're actually just a few frames early from passing any ground collision checks, so they end up just landing on the ground instead. With jump buffering, we hold on to their jump command for a few frames and automatically jump for them if they land on the ground within the allotted time, helping bridge the gap between the player's intended action and the millisecond perfect precision required to actually pull off such a movement. We can accomplish this by simply listening for jump inputs while in the fall state and starting a timer. If the player lands on the ground before the timer runs out, we transition to a jump state rather than any of our relevant ground states. Tip number three, add coyote time. Coyote time is about giving the player a small margin of error for timing their jumps when jumping off a ledge. Oftentimes, the player will wait until the last possible moment to jump so they can cover as much horizontal distance as possible, but oftentimes they end up being just a couple of frames too late. The physics body has already left the ground and the character is now in a falling state, which either doesn't allow for jumping at all or makes the player use up their precious double jump. Rather than punish them for this, we can let our falling state watch for a jump input right after it takes over and allow the player to switch to the jump state if they're only a fraction of a second late. Similar to buffering jump inputs, we can do this by simply setting a timer when they enter the fall state and listening for a jump event. As long as the jump occurs before this timer has run out, we let the player trigger the jump state. Otherwise, we make them fall or use their double jump. Tweak the length of time to your game's needs. A shorter window of error is better for more precise or difficult games, while a more generous window can be great for more casual play. Tip number four, push off ledges. Similar to our past two tips, we can also help the player jump around ledges when they'd normally hit their head. If they jump with a horizontal difference within our desired threshold, we push them in the direction that lets them slide around the ledge and reach their full jump height. You could use two short ray casts on each side of the player but point them upward. With these four ray casts, we can determine what space, if any, is available above the player for them to be snapped to. If an outer ray cast hits the ledge, but the inner ray cast and opposite ray cast don't, we know we can slide the player away from the ray cast that hit. Tip number five, use a custom jump function. Now is when things really start to open up and your creativity can go crazy. There's no reason you have to just apply an upward force to a jump and leave it at that. You can, and probably should if the platforming is a significant part of your game, write a custom jump function that provides a more finely tuned jump mechanic. To get started with this, there's an excellent GDC talk, link in the description, about the math behind custom jumps that is essentially required viewing if this technique interests you. It's 30 minutes of jump mathematics, but it's pretty approachable and has some nice graphs, so I recommend checking it out. But since it would be too lazy to just punt you to a different video, here's a few ideas for how you can customize your jumps. You could increase your fall gravity. Using a higher gravity when the player is falling is a great way to keep the pace of the platforming high since the player spends less time waiting to get back on the ground after performing a maneuver, and it keeps the control feeling snappy and less floaty. You can also go the way of Mario and have a variable height to your jump, where holding the jump button down gives you the full height of the jump while releasing the button early lets you start falling earlier. You can also play with how you respond to the jump being released early. You could simply zero out their vertical velocity and let them start falling right away, but an alternative to this is to simply slash the player's vertical velocity by X percent if they release the jump early or applying a heavier gravity to jumps that are released early, resulting in a bit of a smoother transition from jumping to falling than just immediately dropping. And and lastly, you can always break out some math to design your jumps. Given a maximum height and time to reach that height, determining the required jump equation is trivial. For a tile map based game, defining your jump or at least the max jump height to always be a multiple of the tile size can help you to easily design nail-bitingly close jumps with expert precision. For more information on this technique and the mathematics behind it, check out either the GDC talk or this other excellent video by Gonky. And that's it for today. Hopefully this gives you plenty of ideas about how you can make a better 2D character controller. Let me know in the comments if you have any other techniques you like to use. 
And funnily enough, while I was editing this video, Game Maker's Toolkit released an interactive video essay and tool for playing around with platformer control customization. So check that out as well if you want an interactive way of seeing how a lot of the concepts I've mentioned today can impact your game.